Our next speaker is Wei Wang. Wei is a postdoc uh, working with me, and he's doing some joint work with Shi Wen and others that can sort of continues the previous talk. Wei, would you share your screen and unmute? So can we see my slides here now? Yes, we can see you and hear you. Okay. Okay, thank you. So my presentation is here is just uh, still about the discrete case and uh, actually for the 1D tie bonding models. And this is actually can be seen uh, follow up to previous human presentations. And uh, let me introduce the 1D tie bonding models uh, with the boundary condition with some my notation is actually the matrix notations here's ne negative Laplacians and the potential matrix. And here the VI is just taken uniformly random from zero to Vmax. And uh, in all my slides here, I just consider the uh, uniform case and the Bernoulli case has the similar behaviors here. And we can just uh, uh, define the landscape functions. Actually here is the landscape vectors based on this equa equations. The U is K by one vectors here. And uh, in previous presentation, Shivin had just just introduce them the definition of the counting function and box counting functions. So here's I use the same definitions. And mu just counts the box uh, the, the number of eigenvalues no more than mu and divided by the matrix size k. And uh, for the normalized box counting function and sub u mu here, and uh, we can just define some boxes. The box number is k times mu half and takes the floor integers. Uh, each box with the set lines R is K over M. So and sub U mu just uh, counts the boxes that satisfies the, the minimum the one over U is no more than mu here and divided by the matrix size K. And uh, here is our motivation. She even have just introduced some um, the landscape laws because uh, we, we, we can just find that and, and box counting and the true counting can be actually equivalent. Uh, okay. Well, well, or bounded from above and below with respect to some scaling constant. But uh, we want to investigate it more accurately, more clearly. So that means we, 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 we are just trying to find more accurate uh, approximations because C1 times NU mu over C2 is approximate NU very closely for, a, a, for example, a certain energy level mu bar. So the question is, is this effective scaling constant exist or if it exists, uh, what exactly? And uh, what is the dependence of this scaling constant and the mu bar on Vmax or the matrix size K here? So we just uh, to propose some practical landscape law and it's just based on the uniform case in the 1D type bonding model. So for the uniform potential V, that matrix size K is uh, greater than 1000. That's what we try and the uh, Vmax between zero and two. And first we fix the inner pr uh, scaling constant C2 by 1.25 and she will have introduced that. So we find that C1 times NU mu over 1.25 approximates the, uh, the true counting N mu very closely in numerical. And um, additionally, C1 and mu actually we find is quite independent of the matrix size K. And uh, moreover, C1 is also very sensitive on the Vmax as for mu bar. So the current result just to show that mu bar actually linearly depend on the Vmax roughly. Okay, so let me just uh, uh, show some numerical evidence here. So uh, I, uh, first I show a basic one. I choose the Vmax is one here. And I choose the C1 is 0.448 and the energy level mu bar is 0.32. And we find that Based on this constant, uh, scaling box counting and matches the true counting very well. In this figure, actually, we have three lines here. The, the, the red line is the scaled box counting, and the true, uh, the blue line is the true counting. And we also plot a, 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 a third reference line, vertical black line here, is just to mark the, the energy level mu bar. We found that on the left of the, these arrows, the scaled box counting matches true counting very well. And after that, the, it just became have, have some little difference gradually. So we, we, we can actually call this arrow, this range can be effective uh, uh, the, the energy level. So we can just stop here. 
And after that, I just ch changed the, the matrix size. I actually, I tried- Can, can I just uh, interrupt here? Sorry, I, I, I need to understand something better about the scaling. Okay. Can you go back to the previous slide? Um, so mu is now uh, 0 0.3. It, what is the, what's the maximum that mu could be? You, 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 you cut off your graph at 0 0.4. Does it go all the way up to one? Is it normalized between zero and one? Yeah. So the, the mu, the possible values of mu, and what percentage of the eigenvalues is this, is this capturing? I, I can't. Yeah, the, the y-axis just to give you these answers because here's maybe it's uh, not greater than the one percentage. So the largest so the, eigenvalue is about four plus v max, isn't it? Yes. Not one, four plus v max. Four plus v max, so five is v max one in this case. Yeah, so five. So right. the, the, the eigenvalue ranges from zero to five. All right, okay, thank you. And I'm just trying to get an understanding of what percentage of the eigenvalues we're getting. Their, their K is, say, here uh, 10,000. So it's about um, a little less than 0.01% of the eigenvalues. I'm, I'm, I'm just not sure. Uh, is that what it is? The vertical axis is the. OK, the vertical line just tells you. Uh... Well, that's the question way. This 0.01, that's 1% 1 of the eigenvalues, isn't it? 1% Y axis here? Yes. Yes, because this is a normalized, so this is the 1 percentage of the 1%, I see. So it's about 3 quarters of a percent of the eigenvalues, which you're getting pretty much on the nose. Yeah. Uh, David, remember the situation is symmetric. So yeah, it's course. actually twice whatever you see. Well, it, uh, you also get it on the other end, but yeah. fr fr from, the, from, the, from the edge, you're getting, uh, so, so right, so 0.75% uh, of 50% is the correct uh, way of putting it. You're right, so it's double. So one, one and a half percent of the significant eigenvalues. Oh, oh, okay, I, I, and, and, and is, is that percentage going to persist? I mean, I, that, that, I guess you're gonna do the scaling now, but I, I needed, that's the, the sort of the parameter that I was trying to pay attention to. Go, go ahead. Okay. So next we show the different sizes K from the 1000 to the actually the 1 million. We found the uh, actually similar behaviors here. We just uh, to start at the same vertical lines, the mu bar is 0 0.32. And we find that before that, the match is very well. And after that, it goes some little difference here. So that, that means that it's quite independent of the matrix size K here. And uh, we, we just give more some the, uh, detailed data here that uh, just measure two curves with uh, our infinity norms between zero and 0.32 here for different sides, K from 1000 to the 1 million. We find that most of the errors just um, almost keep the same level, 10 to the fourth, okay, except the, the, the last one is, is smaller. And after that, we choose, uh, try, try another Vmax, a bigger Vmax, Vmax equal two here. And uh, we just uh, choose a similar scaling constant for the 0.444 is very close to what we use the 0.448. And the mu bar here is uh, different. Uh, here is the 0.64. It's a twice of the, what we used before, 0.32, because we just uh, twice Vmax here. We find everything keeps the same and, uh, and the, the, the good matching just uh, stops at the, maybe here the vertical lines. The mu bar equals 0.64 here. And uh, so that what means maybe it's, uh, the constant is just uh, uh, linearly, roughly speaking, depend on the Vmax. And uh, for different size K here, we find that from 1,000 to 1 million, they almost keep the same thing. And uh, this is the detailed data for the fitting norm for Vmax equal two here. And uh, for different sides keep the different uh, same levels, is a 10 to a next fourth. And finally, we just try a smaller Vmax, it's the 0.5. And uh, everything, everything keeps the same except the, the vertical line here, which is the mu bar is 0 0.16. And the skin constant is 0 0.444, which we use the same skin constant with for the Vmax 2K. And we found that on the left, okay, it's matching well. And on the right, right arrows, it just have some little difference. So we just give some uh, our infinity norms also. So it's, it, it is in the same level, the team to the next force for different uh, matrix size K. 
And uh, here I summarize what I use for the first, the previous three cases. We have three Vmax from the one to the 0.5, and uh, we just use a very, very similar uh, scaling constant, the C1 here is 0 0.448, 0 0.444, and 0 0.444, and we find the effective energy level. The mu bar is from 0 to 0 0.32, 0 0.64, and 0 0.16. So that, that is just to support our uh, conjectures as a practical landscape law for that. We see that C, uh, C1 is, and the mu bar is quite dependent on the matrix size K, and the C1 is also very insensitive towards Vmax. And the mu bar, actually, we can see that it's very, roughly speaking, it's linearly dependent on the Vmax here. And finally, we try another example here, so Vmax equals 10, because, because it's not included in our previous practical landscape law. But it doesn't mean that we can't find a suitable scaling constant. Actually, we, we find one. We just try C1, another scaling constant, 0.769 here. Because we can from the figure that this is plotted by the true line. It matches the true counting, the blue, the blue one very well, between 0 and 1. And uh, if we just try the previous the scaling constant, D1, what do we use uh, that for the smaller Vmax? We can just uh, find obviously that it, it can't be effective anymore. So C1 is also effective constant independent of the matrix size K, but you know, it's, it's not very clo close to the previous uh, cases for the smaller Vmax. So that's what I mean. Okay, so that's all, thank you. Thank you very much. We started the question period and let's continue. If you want to have a question, please unmute. Um, so first of all, thank you. It was a beautiful talk, very clear. Um, do we have any clue as to where C1 is coming from? What's the dependence on the max? Any, you know, intelligent guess for what's going on there? Sorry, I can hear. Is there any clarity where C1 is coming from or any guess? You mean C1, just, uh, we have another some actually optimization procedure to, to determine what C1 is. I just uh, optimize another L2 norms, uh, optimi optimi uh, optimal problems to determine C1. But it's a fit, it's a numerical um, procedure. I mean, sort of, you know, anything you can write on a piece of paper, is there any guess as to where analytically the constant is coming from? Yeah, I think I have no theoretical analysis on that. But, but even numerically, you, you already observed that mu just doubles with, with Vmax. Yeah. So from, the question is, is there a, a, a relatively easy functional form or just some intuition as to what, what C, how C1 moves with Vmax? That, that, I think that's the question that Svetlana is asking. That would be a good thing to further study to uh, try to get the dependence on C1 on Vmax. It's a little complicated by the fact that basically the landscape law breaks down once you get mu bigger bigger than what is it one over k squared or bigger so than you get to the large eigenvalues you don't have any boxes left yeah so it's a mu uh, when mu is greater than one okay so because the discrete discrete case only defined on the integer point so there's a sort of arbitrary break off when you, when you hit mu, that mu bar equals one. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Are the constant the same for continuous case or we haven't tried the continuous case? Not the same. Other questions? Okay, thank you, Wei.